Praise God, Church. I mm. want to welcome you today to the, um, our Sunday service. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord? I always get excited on a Sunday, and especially on a Sunday when I'm in the house of the Lord. Amen. Because I believe that I'm within the will of God. Mm. Because God created us in order to praise and worship him. And every time I come to church, I come to praise and worship God. Because I'm here and I'm within the will of God. I don't know whether you feel the same. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. You should be happy that you woke up today. You know, others are possibly struggling in hospital or, uh, you know, are held back by all kinds of issues. But you're here within the house of the Lord. So we should praise and worship God today. I want you to forget everything that you left behind at home or anything that is bothering you. And just believe and trust that uh, God is going to visit us today. God is in 
in the house and he wants to have a relationship with you he wants to have a communion with you so today I want you as you are in this house to imagine that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is right here today and he wants to hear your praise he wants to hear your worship he wants to hear your concerns he wants to hear your cry he's happy to hear your needs if you have any needs or if anything is bothering you God is here today to hear your prayers I just want you to imagine if the Queen was in the house today would you be sad the way you're sad would you be attentive the way you're attentive would you be doing whatever you're doing then what about the King of Kings so I want us to imagine God being here today and now sat next to you standing beside me standing at the pulpit standing in the house and um, when God is in the house his power moves in the house God is here today to heal to deliver and to lift us I want us to worship God today like you've never worshipped him before and I take this opportunity to welcome our family worshiping and praising with us online. You're most welcome. Thank you for joining us. So right now I want us to take time and just enter into prayer to welcome God and to welcome his presence. I can feel his presence moving in the house. For his word says that where two or three are gathered in his name, Put it on my I'm couch. in the midst. Yeah, so I just so I'm very confident, 101% that God is in the house. I'm very confident that he's here and I feel his presence. And as we go into praise and worship right now, I want you to have that confidence that God is pleased with you and is pleased to oh, hear praise and worship yeah, you. Okay. And is it's pleased on, yeah? to hear whatever you have. impossible before him he's here right now right now wanting to hear what you have to tell him please tell him your concerns tell him your needs he's here to deliver you he's here to give you a breakthrough he's here to heal you Lord Jesus we want to thank you for our church family even as they make their way to church I pray that Lord may you give them journey masses to church and Lord, I pray for your protection upon them. And Lord, I pray that may you surround this perimeter, that anybody who passes near here will receive your touch. May you touch them, Lord, and give them a breakthrough. May you heal those who are sick and who are in pain, Lord. Anybody who comes through the gates of Liberty Christian Fellowship, I pray for deliverance upon their lives. I pray for your touch. And when they come in here, Lord, may they meet with you mightily, Lord. May they not go back the same as they came, Lord. May they come here and know that we serve a true and living God. May they come here and witness you and know that you are Lord and you are God. And that there is nothing impossible before you, that there is nothing that you cannot do, Lord. Lord, I worship you and praise you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I magnify you. For you are Lord and you are God. God who is like you, Lord. There is nobody who is like you. Lord, we want to honor you. Lord, we want to adore you. We want to praise your holy name, Lord. Glory be to your name. Lord, come dine with us. Come move amongst us. May you flow freely and touch us freely, Lord. May your deliverance move around this house today. And even those who are logged on online, Lord, may you reach them in their rooms and wherever they're listening or the way they're tuned in. May you touch them, Lord. God, you're not controlled and constrained by boundaries. 
you move freely for the heavens and earth are yours and you have all the power and you are invisible you are powerful you're almighty and you can do anything at any time so we trust you Lord to bring change today to bring deliverance today to turn our lives upside down Lord today for there is no decency with you Lord we worship you we praise you Lord who is like you oh God you're so mighty you're so gracious you're so powerful you're so wonderful Lord we worship you we magnify your holy name hallelujah 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 Lord hallelujah 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 oh glory 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 be to your holy name Lord consume us. May your presence consume everyone in this house, Lord. May you move freely and fill us with your Holy Spirit. May your anointing move freely, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mighty are you, mighty are you, Lord. Oh, beautiful are you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, we adore you, we magnify your holy name, Lord. We pray that, Lord, you touch the worship team, Lord, that as they lead us in worship, we worship you in spirit and truth. We pray for the preacher today, that, Lord, you use him as your vessel to bring your word to your people, to touch us at the point of our need, Lord. Lord, we welcome your presence. Thank you, Lord. We pray all this believing that you've had us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I welcome you to a wonderful worship team. Worship team, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a joy to be in the house of the Lord. I want to invite you to stand to your feet. Let's use everything that we have to praise the Lord today. Use your hands, stomp your feet, wave your hands, shake that body a little bit. Let us rejoice before the Lord. Nothing, 
Nothing you cannot change Nothing you cannot turn around You are able Great and mighty God I put my trust in you
Take a minute and love on Jesus. Glorious one, exalted one. High and lifted up above the earth. The Lord of hosts. The God of us. The Lord of hosts. Salvation. The one who was and is and is to come. Glorious one. Jesus our salvation. Jesus our deliverer. Jesus our strength of our souls Jesus Jesus our praise at night Jesus our strength our deliverer there is no one that is like you there is no one that is your equal there is none that is above there is none that is above you are glorious you are glorious oh Jesus we take a minute right now Jesus to say you are glorious, to say you are mighty, mighty, mighty. You are glorious, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You are. We came to bask in your presence and we came to sit at your feet and we came to lift up our praise. One of the things that I love about the Lord is that there's no battle that I ever will face or that I have ever faced that he has not already overcome. He is victorious. He was victorious 2,000 years ago. He's victorious in my life today. He's victorious tomorrow. He will be victorious the day after that. And the day after that, 2021, 23, 24, I don't care what it throws at me. No weapon that is fought against me will prosper. For our God only knows how to triumph. He is the first. He is the last. He is the same. He is the one. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try. My God will never fail. I said, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see you victory. I'm gonna see you victory. The battle belongs to you, Lord. 
in the midst of the battle and just lift up your banner and say to the Lord, the battle belongs to you. The battle belongs to you. I don't have to fight this battle. I don't need the wisdom. I need to just stand still and declare the salvation of the Lord.
somebody standing in the midst of battle, now is the time to lift up your eyes. Somebody standing in the midst of confusion, now is the time to lift up your eyes. Above, far above what is seen, far above what seems. For your God is greater. I see people carrying weights. Just lay them at the feet of Jesus because he knows how to take every situation and turn it for good. You may be carrying something that has overwhelmed you. Lay it at the feet of Jesus because he knows how to take what's us because he knows what confuses us and work it for our good. Great and mighty is our Hallelujah. Is our 
afternoon glorify your name I can't hear you saints in the house just begin to articulate those words to God just give it five minutes give five minutes just speak unto God speak unto God of his greatness his goodness his mercy the Bible says in Jews every morning greater great is God's faithfulness to us God's God's faithfulness great Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. Come on, just sing it. Yeah. yeah. Mighty is our God. Just that one, just that one word. I want you to sing it and sing it again. Yeah. One more 
Come on, why don't we just lift up those nations that are going through a um, series of COVID cases, Uganda being one of them, India, China. Father, we bring the nations unto you this morning. We bring the nations unto you, those that are, are dying because of a disease called COVID. We bring up those people that have lost loved ones. We walk with them in that shadow of darkness that they're walking in. And we declare, mighty is God. Mighty is God. We pray for the nations. We pray for the people. We thank you because your glory is revealed. Even in this time, even in our midst. Because you remember the circumstances around us. But I pray, Heavenly Father, this morning, that your Holy Spirit will bring truth that will transform our hearts and change our minds that will be able to walk in the victory that we have in Christ that will manifest that that was spoken by his son Father I pray that you confirm your words with miracles with signs and with wonders we stand in faith knowing that you are faithful Lord, I come as a vessel. I come as a man, but I pray in the name of Jesus that every bias, every mindset, every heartache that I am going through even now, that will step away, that the purity of your word may come forth. I pray, Spirit of the living God, even in the time that we're living in, even in the era that we're living in, the truth shall rise above the wisdom of men. The truth shall triumph over the lies of the enemy. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, because you give us that responsibility as believers to search for truth and walk in truth that your glory may be manifest in Jesus' name. And the believers of God say, Amen. Amen. Come on, why don't you give a clap offering unto the Christ? I believe I'm still online. Why don't we just give a clap offering for those online? God is amazing. God is amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing. We can have the lights on if we could. Welcome to Liberty House. Amen, 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 amen. If we can have, I, could, I would like to see the people. <laughs> wow. I mean, if you guys are online, if the cameras were put you in the audience, you'd be impressed. Amen? Hallelujah. Can you, I, I, do you want me to, sh okay, that's, that's what I need. I need some power in that word, you know? <laughs> I'm going to shout out, please, please be released. Sorry, guys. Thank you so much. Give another clap offering onto the crowd. Okay. 
Do I sound okay? I feel like I'm talking from my nose. Okay? Are you gonna, are you gonna, I, 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 I wish I could tell from online to see whether I'm sounding okay. I feel like I'm talking from my nose. Yeah? Are we good? Amen. Are you guys good? You're so quiet. Wow, what's happening? Is rapture happening? <laughs> Why don't you just wave to your neighbor and say, thank you for coming this morning. Yeah, you can, you're allowed to talk, even in your mask. You can talk to them. Tell the other one that, welcome for coming in Liberty House. Amen, amen, amen. I may release the young people. I believe you have service that is starting now. So if the, uh, the guys that are going up to Paus, you can go, so that I minimize the movement. And the young people that are going will stand up. You know, sometimes you, you have to repeat yourself. They will stand up so that they leave. <laughs> Yeah, that would be good to just minimize the movement a little bit. Well, we're here today in Liberty House and God is good. And all the time, awesome, awesome. I just want to thank the house for welcoming my friends. How many people were online on Friday? Wow, okay, let's do that again. How many people were online on Friday? Excellent. Crazy stuff. Okay, we're going to do this. On Friday, while we're not in church, we're going to go online. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to make sure that we're looking at our service and supporting our service. Is that good? I would encourage you, um, if you didn't see the, uh, uh, the discussion that went on online, it would be good for you to see that because that. This conversation I'm having this morning is a fathering of what happened online. If I may have my core scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 7. Glory to God. I just want to welcome our beloved pastors, Pastor Andrew and Pastor Saha, who are in the house. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that good? It's excellent. And all the pastors that have been... Um, talked about or spoken about, you're welcome, amen. I'm just giving a special welcome because it's a rare moment. And then I also want to welcome you who has made an effort to tune in online. I hope you're doing what? What do they call it? Facebook parties? Sorry, I'm not in the media, so, you know. Whatever you do to make sure the word is going round. Uh, tuning in, I hope you're out of your pajamas. Those who tend to watch TV in their pajamas on Sunday, sleep in, as well as those who have made an effort to come in. We are blessed. Is that CJ? Oh my God. Come on, give me a wave. Good to see you, man. Wow, it's been long. I love that guy. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. It's just love. It's just love. Good to see you guys. Right, okay. Without getting into, um, without getting into different rabbit holes, I'm excited as you can see. Second Corinthians chapter number four. Am I okay with my volume? I mean, with my sound? I don't like how I sound. I'll be very honest. I don't like it. Do you guys like how I sound? Are we okay? Yes? Am I being fussy? That's, that's, that's me being... Let me lift this up a bit. There. Should I put it up? Is it me? Should I hold it? Is it here? Sorry. Technology is not my very best friend. Is that good? Yeah? Excellent. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter number four. And I'm going to read from verse seven. Now, those who missed the service online, we were fathering a conversation and the whole understanding. If we can get away with this mindset, I believe as a church, as we are rebuilding as a church, there are mindsets that we need to build. Amen. There is a way of thinking. I've, I've been reading church history for a while now. I've been reading church history for a while now. And throughout the week, God was telling me about a, a generation that we see in Judges chapter number 2, verses 10. A generation that arose that did not know the ways of God. Are you with me, church? And I feel that there are certain things that we have dropped. There are certain ways of God, there's sudden understanding along the way and as we moved, 
with God, we completely lost that understanding. Amen. Hello, church. Amen. I'm expecting a voice back. I'm an evangelist, so I tend to like a feedback. Amen. Yeah. So in that understanding, I hope in rebuilding the house, we're rebuilding mindsets, we're rebuilding knowledge. Amen. Concerning the truths of God. Now, this verse says in verse 7, and I would like to read it really from verse 6. To give you a little bit of context and to build on the context. Now, those who don't know um, a bit of church history concerning the context of the Corinthian church, the Corinthian church was the most, it is like this, it was like having a church in London. It was very multicultural, yeah, very liberal. I mean, if you have read the book of um, Corinthians, you know this is a church which had a dude that was sleeping with a stepmother. I want to build a picture tonight. Yeah? It was a city that was very prosperous. It's like living in a metropolitan city, whether it's New York City, London City, very affluent. Yeah? In the time. Glory to God. Very multicultural. But they had an issue, and yet very gifted. So this is the interesting thing here. It was a church that was filled with giftedness because Paul begins to correct the gifts like the prophetic or the speaking in tongues, right? If you're with me. Glory to God. At the same time, it was manifesting a lot of character issues. Are you with me, church? And the frustration of Paul was trying to marry the two. Okay? Now, if you've read Corinthians chapter number, I mean, um, uh, First Corinthians, the book of First Corinthians, I like reading the Bible in books, in blocks, just a bit of information for those who read the Bible. The verses were helpful for us. Originally, it was a whole block. If you want to understand books, you need to read the whole book. That's why they say, study the Word of God, yeah? And show yourself approved. You study it. Yeah, you study a block. Now, in the understanding of the context of the church then, I believe and I feel, and I'm going to be very practical today, that it is similar to the situation that we're going through right now. If you look at the body of Christ right now, if you look at the church as we know it, there is a mixture of character issues and yet spirituality. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. And there was an understanding that Paul was trying to birth within the Corinthian church that I hope we will be able to catch now. Okay, verse 6 says, For it is the God who, it is God rather, and I'm reading from the King James Version, New King James, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God, in the face of Christ, verse 7. Now, those who are having a conversation uh, with us on Friday, you'll notice that Dr. Desire Dennis quoted this scripture. And I remember Pastor Lincoln was talking about our ability to collaborate with God. Hello, church. Yeah? Now, uh, and this is what the media, I just want to link up a few things. I know Pastor Lincoln was preaching about the master seed. I need to touch faith. I like to kind of have a, a collaboration of everything so that we have a sense of continuity. So I'm going to try and mix it up. Bear with me. So when we're looking at faith, right? Because the Bible, um, Hebrews chapter number 11, and I'll go off script a little bit here. It says, uh, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes must believe one that he is. Secondly, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So there is a mindset that you need to be in in order for you to receive that which God has spoken. Are you with me? Now that's your responsibility. I'm here on the responsibility of man. Now, help me. I'll just do a few basics. We know that Christ has done it. Amen? Do you believe it? I get scared a little bit when the church is doubtful. <laughs> Amen? Do you believe Christ has finished and it is done? It is accomplished? 
Okay, now that does not mean that we're going to be lazy, glory to Jesus, but it tells us that we have the ability. Are you with me? Now, what faith does, it gives us a media in which we can collaborate with God concerning the purposes, the, the purposes of the earth that he has already spoken. He is not speaking them in being. Amen. He has spoken them. You remember what scripture that uh, Apostle Okello did give, Fred? He said that when we talk about Apostle Jeremiah, I mean, uh, Prophet Jeremiah, I knew you in your mother's belly and ordained you. So God has already, if I would speak to you, ordained certain events in your life. Are you with me, church? Do you believe that? Yeah? Oh my God, I hope they hear me. Yeah? So there's stuff he has ordained for you. So the question is not the stuff. The question is, how are you able to receive that which he has spoken? Remember, in the, on, on the conversation, we spoke about the voices that are in the media and you being the transmitter that picks up the signal. Yeah? Are you with me, church? So I'm talking about that transmitter. Listen to this. And, and I, love, I love, you know, one of, I always say, guys, when you're reading, when you get to Paul's letters, how many people are excited about Paul's letters? Like, you know, I read Paul's letters over and over and over. The epistles, I live in the epistles. And the crazy thing is, the way Paul begins to decipher the gospel and the truths of Christ, especially to us, the Gentiles, you can feel the heart of God Right? Because you see, the people of Israel had an experience. But we were idol worshippers. Amen. And when we were engrafted, there is a certain mindset that, be that he bestows in us that helps our understanding in understanding God's truths. Oh my God, I hope they hear me. Yeah? I know you hear me. Glory to God. Verse 7. And it says, but we have this treasure. Tell your neighbor, you got this treasure. Oh my God, I ain't started preaching yet. <laughs> Amen. We've got this treasure in these earth and vessels that the excellency, oh my God, of the power, yeah, may be, huh, it never said of you, glory to God, that the excellency of power may be of God. Hmm? And none of us, eight, we are pressed. We'll leave that. But I'll repeat it. But we have this treasure. Now tonight, I want us to pick up one mindset. What does it mean to carry God's treasure? Because when we're talking about collaboration with God, we must agree on particular faults, points here. We must agree first point. Yeah? That we have God inside of us. Do you believe it? Oh my God. And yet we're praying down. The title of my message is Heaven on Earth. I'm going to hit you with a bomber. Can I hit you with a bomber? Heaven is already on earth. Oh my God. They didn't get it. It is already on earth, yet, in, yet not manifested yet. So the question is, if it is already on earth, how do we manifest it? You see, the new covenant was a bomb shaker. Because when Israelite was building the temples and the tabernacles and was crossing from the wilderness into the promised land, God was showing us a picture of what is to come. Are you with me, church? But when Jesus came, there was a bombshell that happened. Everything that God purposed in the earth was manifest. That is why Jesus said, the kingdom of God is. Oh, are you with me, church? Yes. The kingdom of God is. So there is the evidence of the fact that we are fleshly beings. But this is, this is the amazing thing. Did you know that we carried heaven from the beginning and God breathed into man and he became a living soul? He became a living soul. And that is why when you begin to understand that, then you know what Romans is talking about in Christ coming as the second Adam. To restore us back to the place of originality. Yeah? 
But that place of originality, that is a place where we understand that we have the God life inside of us. Are you with me, church? Amen. We have this earthen vessels, this heavenly treasure, carrying it in earthen vessels. Let's go. Corinthians, when we talk about heavenly treasure, yeah, we're talking about the fact that we have God in the inside of us. Let's go. First Corinthians uh, chapter number 6, 14 to 9, 10. Wow. What is this heavenly stuff that we have? The Bible tells us very clearly in John chapter number 14, verses 16 to 23. Actually, let's go John 14, 16 to 23. I am too excited. I'm jumping everywhere. (laughs) Amen. Let's go, John. What is this that we carry? What is this divine thing? You remember it? You probably do. 14, 16 to 23. My God. And he declares, and I will pray, if you're with me, you can read uh, John chapter number 14, 16, we can start from 15, yeah, from 15. He says that um, if you love me, keep my commandments, glory to God, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray, yeah, that I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. My, I mean, another helper that he may abide what? With you. Yeah? (laughs) Does the Bible say, will abide with you for a moment? Yeah? (laughs) Does it say, he will abide with you and um, he will leave you the moment you miss God? Does the Bible say that? I'm trying to shift your mindset here. Amen. Amen. My Bible says he will abide with you forever. Who is this person? The Holy Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Listen. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you. Talking to you believers in Christ. You know him. For he dwells where? With you. He dwells with you. He's not trying to dwell. He's not coming down. Right? He is already indwelling you. This is the beauty of the new creation in Christ. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 17 that you are a new creation in Christ. What? Your old mindset, your old nature has gone. Now behold, you are a new thing. I'm paraphrasing it. But what is the newness that happens with you? The abiding power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. So, allow me to to, to, to kind of ask myself, because when I read the Bible, I asked myself a couple of questions. So what happened at the fall? I'll give you a little bit of Bible basis. What happened to man at the fall? Right? Because the Bible says he died. When man sinned, if you're paraphrasing, he died. So what exactly was happening there? Because remember in Genesis 5 to 7, we talked about him having the rule of breath of God. Amen. Then he rebels against God, and then he dies. Now Romans clarifies that, and we'll go there, that Adam came without sin, I mean Christ, who was the second Adam, came without sin, and restored us back to the place where we are alive in God. Do you believe that? But this same Jesus that died for you told us before we left that he will not leave us as orphans. You know it, it's basic truth, isn't it? Do you believe it though? Hmm? Because oftentimes I ask Christians, if you believed it, you would confess it and say it and leave it and would see the manifestation of it. Oh my God. I want the word of God to come from here. To hear that it may happen. Because you see, and this is why I struggle with Christians, the Bible was never designed to be a logical, can I say it, reasoning text. It was meant like the Greeks did it. 
It was meant to be experienced. When I read the word of God, I meditate on it. That's why Jesus, I mean, that's what God told Joshua. Meditate on the word of God day and night that you may prosper. How would he prosper? By just pondering and regurgitating on God. Because your mindset changes. That's why Romans tells us in 10 that we renew our mindsets. That we'll be able to what? To discern the will of God. Ha. Are you with me? Holy Spirit. This is the treasure that we're talking about. Yeah? I will not leave you as often. So the Holy Spirit, guess what? Who abides in you will be with you. And I will, I will not leave you as often. I will, I will come to you. Eight. A little while longer. The world will see me no more, the physicality. But you will see me because I leave you. Because I leave you will what? Leave. You know the scripture that says Christ in us, the hope of glory. What gives the believer life is the fact that we carry the divine in us. Hey! And yet, we are not gods. <laughs> oh God, help me not go into those rabbit holes. <laughs> let, me, let me stay on course here. I'm tempted. Amen. But even when we carry the Holy Spirit, the scripture of our call, which is 2 Corinthians 4, 7, is telling us, but yes, we are still anthem, yet carry heavenly. Hey, we are still limited, yet carry the unlimited. Are you with me, church? Oh, sorry, I need to come back. Okay, hallelujah. Amen. I get excited. <laughs> I'm getting used to this. Sorry, I'm lying. Getting used to it. Amen. We must. Are you with me, church? So the trick is, how do we marry the two? How do we live a life if, with the awareness that we have the Holy Spirit in us? Can I tell you, believers, if you, and this is where Corinthians chapter, let's go to Corinthians chapter number. Oh my God, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verses 14, um, verses, chapter number 6, verses 14 to 19. This is where it comes in. Because Paul was trying to tell these guys, guess what? You have the Holy Spirit residing in you. Ah, actually, before I even go there, let me rush down. You can look for Corinthians 6. Let me rush down this quickly. Yeah? And he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Listen. Oh, my God. Let's go there. Let's move from dwelling. Let me read something here. I live in Alvinus. I will uh, blah, 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 20. At that day you will know that I am in my father and my father is in you and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me. Amen. That is why it's good for you to stay steady in truths. And he who loves me, listen, will be loved by my father, hallelujah, and I will love him, and what? Manifest myself to him. Oh my God. So, manifestation correlates with how much of God's word you obey. You see, this is the missing ingredient with our generation. You know that generation that woke up and did not know God? They, our generation has lost the fact of understanding that you need to walk in step with God's word, God's command, God's spirit. By the way, which we can see by the fruit that you actually give, glory to Jesus, we'll go there. Amen. In order for you to manifest God. I have met myself over and over again. And God told me, if you do not obey my word, you can manifest. We're in a generation that wants to, and I give this joke, we want John G. Lake. But we do not want to pay John G. Lake's price. We read them. We read Smith Wigglesworth. But 
We do not want to pay Smith Wigglesworth's price. Can I give you a little biography of Smith Wigglesworth? There's a story about Smith Wigglesworth. This was a great man of faith. Amen. Who was raising the dead. That's if you believe it. Because some people think, oh, it's not believing. Okay, read history. Okay. This guy stopped the funeral. Amen. In his history, it wasn't that he stopped a funeral yesterday because he was excited and prayed two hours. That wasn't it. He lived a life where he did not allow even the telegraph to come into his house. Lester Summer talks the time when he came down to see him. And he came with the times, the telegraph. And he told him, what have you got right there? I don't mean it's a newspaper. Now for us, we'll be thinking, it's the news. And we're supposed to be knowing the news, right? He told him, that stays out. And he told him, why? He says, this house is the house of the word. I'll paraphrase. And when they had breakfast, he told them on, even when they had dinner at one particular time when he was in a restaurant, he said, now that I have filled my flesh, I'll fill my spirit. He brought out the word of God and after a meal, he read the word of God. We read the word of God for one hour on a Wednesday because we may be preaching on a Friday or a Sunday. And we have a bachelor's degree in reading the word. One hour. It is a lie. You manifest that which you continually practice. It is a habit. We're human beings. We're habitual people. You always manifest that which you do habitually. It's proven. Do not expect yourself. You know, like what Pastor El said, Master said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? It cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? It cometh hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more of the word of God, we're talking truth, we're talking pure word, whether it is Rem or Logos, because there is the written and there is the active word of God. Hallelujah, church. And then when we, and this, way, this is where we go about intimacy. When you're intimate with God, I always ask people when you say, I have been with God, I tell them what is he saying to you. We used to do it this way. What scripture are you walking in today? You saw those friends of mine? That's how we live our lives. They say, oh, what verse are you walking in today? And it became a competition of verses. <laughs> we did not wake up one morning and all of a sudden had passion for God. No. We took time in the caves, those who have been in Uganda. We took time in prayer at um, the Baptist church in, in, in uh, Makerere. While people were sleeping, we're doing overnight. And God began to affirm that which he has called us to do. And then he said, I have sent you. And I asked him, you've sent me to do what? And you continue in the presence of God until you carry a message. But you don't just come out with a message. You read and study the message until you believe the message. Then in your belief of the message, it begins to manifest. That is the culture that was spread around our forefathers that preached Christ. Our forefathers that preached Christ, the revivals we hear about or talk about, whether it is a reformation by, um, uh, by Luther, all the way to Smith Wigglesworth, these guys took time in God's word and stayed in monastery, studying the word of God to the place of obsession. Do you know what they call us now? Dude, you're too much, too spiritual. Now they call you too spiritual. Now the thing is that even when they call you too spiritual, you have just spent half an hour in prayer. And, 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 and please guys, I'm not knocking you. I'm not talking, I'm not giving time to the time you pray. But you get the picture. We need to spend time in order for us to manifest that which is written. Because the forefathers manifested it. But it begins with a mindset. <laughs> Are you with me? That I manifest myself to him. Glory to God. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 where I've always wanted to go to. Derek, be disciplined. I am not. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> be disciplined. I said to myself, Derek, be what? Disciplined. 614 to 910. We carry the divine. Oh my God. But the way we present ourselves, the other day, I don't know who I was talking to, I told him about if we walked in the awareness of understanding that we have God inside of us, you would not go to a brothel or club or whatever you lot do when you're out of church. Glory to God. Oh, oh do we have uh, holy Christians here? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. If we walked in the awareness of that, we would not do particular things. Oftentimes, guys tell me, you know what? I struggle in this area of sin. And I'm we're like, because there is two ways in looking at this. Because when you look at the manifest, I mean, the limitation of your earthenness, some people think it is, uh, and I'll say this, it is, uh, um, um, what, what's the word? It's a freedom to sin. Yeah, I've got those. So whenever you caution them about their lifestyle, they'll be more like, um, it's the earthen vessel. Then they quote me one of the scriptures I'm going to bring where Paul was fighting that which I wanted to do, I could not do, but I ended up doing. No, 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 no. Bad representation. But however, listen to this. And this shows the condition of the church because I asked myself, even Lake walked in the time of the plague, the virus is knocking us left, right, and center. And I'm thinking, my friends are what I'm thinking about that, but you say God heals. They say, yeah, okay, what's up with COVID? And we do not have an answer. We even put theology in it. You know, I also say that this is an experience that God is uh, kind of, even with that, he is, yes, he is God. We won't limit him. But what about the fact that the Bible confirms signs and miracles and it is littered within Scripture to the believers that were walking in that time? And even when we come out of the Acts of the Apostles and we look at some of the believers that lived in a time that we're a little bit aware about, they still see these manifestations. Even when we go to China in a time of persecution, there's testimonies of this manifestation. The question is, how are they living their lives? Because this was the challenge with Paul in the Corinthian church. A friend of mine said, you know what? We do not preach about sin enough. Ooh, I can hear the penny has dropped. <laughs> and everyone is like, don't you dare judge me. Yes! That is why the flesh is experiencing too much corruption because you're too much in the indulgence of your flesh. <laughs> Are you with me? Can I go OTT without preaching perfectionism here? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I need to remind myself a little bit of these things because I can go in rubber holes and people are like, oh, what is he trying to say? So your limitation as an anthem vessel is not giving you reason to sin. Ah. It's giving you reason to rely on God because it's by grace, not of works. Are you with me, church? That man should boast. You remember Paul, the thorn in the flesh that everyone is talking about? I mean, I've, I've had a debate about the thorn in the flesh. People are talking it is an illness. Mm. Others are talking it's sin. Mm. Amen. I mean, for my understanding, if I can give my position, it was the persecution. It's those people who kept on persecuting his ministry. Every single time he felt, even in the Corinthian church, he felt the need to continually tell the church, I am called of God. I am approved. Because there are those that did not believe that he was called. And he even names them in his letters. This guy did me bad. Me bad. Amen. Glory to God. But one thing that he did not tolerate in all his letters, he was not of sin. Amen. And if you look at the movements of revival, they had the burn of holiness without which you shall not see God. Two scriptures were over them. Be ye holy for I am holy. 
and holiness without which you shall not see God. So there is got to be a sense, yeah? And when I'm talking about this type of holiness, I'm not talking about you trying to stop sin. No, I'm talking about you trying to understand that there is something that you carry that is far stronger, far better, far greater than what you desire to indulge in. Are you with me, church? And the onus is on you to make the decision. Are you with me? Even though we preach so strongly about it, it still comes down to you to make that decision. Can I read on? I've been trying to read on. <laughs> 14. And God both raised up the Lord. Am I in the right scripture? 1 Corinthians 6, 14 to 19. And God both raised up the Lord and, the will, and will also raise us up by his power. Right? Do you not know that what? That your bodies are of Christ. See that awareness? Yeah? Amphiness, caring, heavenliness. Treasure. We've already defined what the heavenly treasure is. It's the Holy Spirit abiding in you. If you want a quick answer to that. Yeah? But then there is this awareness that you need to walk in in order for you to manifest that which is spoken or that which is speaking now, presently. Yeah? Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall you then take your members? Now, this is your decision. You see where decisions come in? Of Christ and make them members of a harlot. Certainly not. Can you imagine you come on Sunday service, right? And I am, I am, I am opening you up. What do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, exposing you about your Soho encounter last night. Yeah, those who don't know London, well, Soho is the place. I know you people are like, where is Derek knowing this? Oh yeah, I know. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I don't normally preach there, but I know of about it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. About your soul encounter, and, and the, what we used to call it, about that spare key that you have about someone's house. You know that when you put her in hiding? Or oh, about that text that you keep hiding when your spouse tells you about it. <laughs> hey, church. I'm in trouble. I, 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 I don't even know what's happening on Instagram. They're like, there he goes again with his judgmental spirit. <laughs> now I'm trying to give you a mindset that will help you walk in the divine. <laughs> oh my God. Help us. Okay. Shall I then text in that? Certainly not. 16. Oh, do you not know that he who has joined the body um, a, a harlot is one with the hallow. For the two, he says, shall become one, which is in the context of marriage. Yeah? But he who is joined to the Lord is one with... With what? One spirit with... Okay, so he says, then he tells you something that I never hear. He tells you, flee from what? What does he say there? Flee from sexual... He does, does he tell you fast about it? Yeah? We're talking about, by the way, when we're speaking this, it was wrought in the Corinthian church. In fact, to be called Corinth just simply meant you're so sinful. Especially with, with, the, uh, with the sexual immorality, the Corinthian church just liked to endowed in sexual sin. It was their thing. I know, right? And Paul, who is the revealer of grace, glory to God, addressed it directly. He addressed it directly and told them, guess what? If you do not, or if you continue living this way, amen, your road that is leading will go the other way. Glory to God. But if you struggle with it, he tells you flee from sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is out of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his body. Okay? I don't want to go into all sorts of thinking. 
because people are then saying, oh, are you trying to tell us that sexual sin is higher on the list than any other sin? No, 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 sin is the same. But there is something about sexual sin that is addictive. Have you met people who struggle with pornography? It's like a drug, hooks them. There is something, and he tells you, don't go there because it has an addictive sense. You don't want to deal with sexual sin. Yeah? But how does he do that? He tells you by first telling you who you are. That you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, don't you know that your body is the temple? Let's go there. Please see my sexual sin. Uh, uh, 18. Yeah? But he who commits sexual immoral sin is against his own body. 19 is where we were at. Or oh, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from who? From God. And you are not of your own. There was an exchange that happened to you, sir, madam, when Calvary touched the earth. There was a changing. That's why it talks about you being crucified with Christ. Now you no longer live, but Christ lives in me. When you release that reality, you begin to manifest the benefits of your inheritance. Are you with me, church? Our limitation is the indulgence or our unwillingness to live a cautious life of that which abides in us. Let me end with uh, 2 Timothy, because I could have this organization all day. Oh, yes, I will. I will end with uh, 2 Timothy, chapter number 2, verse 20 to 21. Wow. 2. Oh, my God. We carry this treasure, this treasure, this treasure in these earthen vessels. Oh my gosh. You know what? Let's first quickly, before I end there, let me go to Romans 8. Ooh, forgive me, church. Forgive me. Forgive me. Is it Romans 8 that I want? Romans 8. A3, let's have a look if this is what I want. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'll read from verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, listen, to those who are in what? In Christ. We know what it means to be in Christ, right? If you love me, you obey my commandments, and I will... Abide, right? It is not just you receiving Christ. You see, this is, this is, where, this is where we kind of miss it. Because oftentimes people get indulged, and I'm talking about people who indulge in sin. I'm not, people, I'm not talking about people who are in the process of glorification. I'm talking about people who meddle and meddle, and the conviction of the Spirit is telling you, and you're refusing to listen. That's what I'm addressing. Glory to God. Yeah? So oftentimes, here we come in and say, oh, and I've seen this a lot. When you talk to them, oh, there's now no commendation of those who are in Christ Jesus. We like the scripture, right? But listen what it says. Who are in Christ Jesus? Who what? Who do not walk according to what? So if you walk in the flesh, what's going to happen to you? You're going to feel condemned. Hallelujah. You're going to feel condemned. Why? Because the Spirit is convicting you of sin. Amen. Glory to God. To the flesh. But according to the Spirit, listen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, what? Has made me free. Yeah? From the law of sin and in death. Now we know what that is. We know we're talking about the law, the Ten Commandments right here. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, yeah, God did by sending, yeah, his own son in the likeness of what? Of sinful flesh, 
Yeah? On the account of sin, that he may what? Condemn the sin in the flesh. Okay, can I help you, Christian? Can I help you? Can I help you? You have the ability and the power not to continue. I mean, to, uh, you have the ability and the power to break that cycle. You got it. Why? Because Christ condemned it. But what you need to do, now I'm helping someone online, yeah? What you need to do, because I can, I can hear the voices. They're like, but listen, I have tried. Let me help you. Change the way you think. Understand what Christ has done for you. Yeah? You notice that the power of sin has been broken. Glory to God. So because you have a Holy Spirit residing in you, he gives you the ability to overcome. Yeah? But what is happening to you? It is you and what you yield yourself to more. Can I preach to someone? If you continue yielding to the flesh... Or allowing the cravings of your flesh, and that's why we do fasting, to kind of subject some of those cravings down, yeah? And do not pay attention or awareness to what you have in the Holy Spirit, that is to the Holy Spirit inside of you, you will have a problem. Glory to God, you will have a problem. However, you know, the Bible says to be kindly minded is an enmity to God. Glory to God, I'm hoping church is catching me up fast. Glory to God. So we build a mindset in which our focus is on the Holy Spirit that resides inside of us. Now in doing that focus, do you know what happens? Why do you struggle with you? It falls off. Let me tell you guys, I struggled with stuff in my life. And I'll give you a personal testament. I struggled with stuff in my life. One of the things I struggled with was lying. Boy, I would tell a lie to a dog and call it a cat, and the dog would allow it. Convincing. Yeah? And only because, obviously, if you're stubborn and you need to kind of, your parents call you off, you need to be thinking, what do I have to tell them that is going to sort me out? So I trained myself to lie. But have you been such a liar that you begin to believe your lie is true? <laughs> You've never been there? Well, you guys are holy. Well, I was there. <laughs> I was in a place where by my lies had become truth to me. And as what we call be self-deceived, it happens a lot. I'll tell you this. And you need to know when it happens. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. There are certain things you indulge in, and for you, you think that God has told you to do it. It may not be sin. It could be an activity in your life that is not necessarily in the will of God. But for you, you have convinced yourself. That's your flesh speaking, because your flesh has a voice. Yeah? But... I learned to move away. And God told me, he told me one word, if you learn to separate the vile from the precious, I will then use you as a mouthpiece. Then I began to ask myself, okay, how do I, I don't know, does God speak to you guys like that? Amen. So when I began to study, I noticed that, okay, how do I deal with lying? Now, this is the interesting thing. The more I concentrated on lying, so I would come in the day and affirm, affirm myself, today I am not going to lie. Stir up myself. You know, when you start, motivate yourself. Go, do what I have to do, and that's the day I lied most. <laughs> lie about your work, lie about your homework, lie about, I, that's the day I lied the most. And I went back in repentance. You know what we call repentance? That is what we call emotional crying. I went back in crying, Lord, a wretched sinner like me. Yeah? I reached a point where I began to think, no, this is the weakness of my flesh. I will never stop lying. I need to live with it. And the Lord told me, no, sir. <laughs> That's how I began to understand that greater is he that is in me than the devil in the world. He began to tell me, guess what? Concentrate on me. I don't know where the lies went, but they went. I can't tell tomorrow, it just fell off. I didn't say therapist. I didn't say it fell off. Why? Because my focus was on Christ. Hallelujah. Wow. I am done here. 2 Timothy 2.20. Allow me one scripture. Am I allowed? 
Please, service leader, you can stand up and start slapping me. <laughs> oh, as I take this home. <laughs> Amen. I was reading. Still on the responsibility of man. So listen, you have the divine. You have God. When I talk about the divine because the Holy Spirit, yeah, he is the third person of the Trinity, yeah, that is what I'm talking about. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And therefore, need to live a life that is aware of that. It says, but in a house, there are not only vessels of gold. Listen. Yeah. Not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some of honor, some of what? Dishonor. In the same house. Yeah. In the same house. Listen. Listen. The Bible is not going to tell you. So, fast and pray for 40 days and you change. Yeah, let's see what it says. And I'm not knocking down fasting and praying. I love fasting and praying. I like living a fasted life. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah? 21. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter. That's your responsibility. So you take time in those areas in your life and build the word of God and truth around them until they fall off of you. That he will be a vessel of honor. But what happens? Cleansing. You, you know very well that the, word of, the washing of the water by the word, Ephesians chapter number 5, when it's talking about husbands and wives, please come as we stand up. As we stand up. Yeah? We're continually washing ourselves with the word of God. And that's what we need to happen. You online, in-house, who is struggling with areas in your life and you're asking yourself, where is God in this? I'll tell you, if you're a Christian believer, it is clear in scripture that God lives in the inside of you. But if you're studious enough to obey his commandments and stand and abide in his truth, yeah, that canonence, the vastness, as a doctor desire say, will begin to reduce, and the heavenliness will begin to rise up because you are yielding to the heavenliness that is inside of you. And when you begin to have the fullness of that heavenliness, you begin to leak, and that is when the manifestations happen. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Ha, even as we are in a place of transition in this ministry, glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Even as we are in a place of transition as a house, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that there is a transformation of our mindsets that we may receive that which has already been spoken. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, oh, glory to God. And I hear the Spirit of God say, hearken unto my voice and hold on to that which I have already spoken unto you. It is not a new thing. It is the thing that I have spoken. For stewardship is what I've called you to do. And stewardship is what you do, declares the Spirit of God. That you may walk in the things that God has called you to do and has called you to walk. That if you walk back again in the paths and in the narrow path that I have called you and I've ordained you to walk in, you will then manifest that which you have been praying for, declares the Spirit of grace. And grace says, I shall rise you up uh, as a banner, and I will lift you up, uh, and my name shall be called your name, uh, and I'll be your God, uh, and you'll be my people. So arise, stand, and walk and align, declares grace. Uh, for grace says, walk in the places that I've called you to be in. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that wind that you feel, that rush that you feel, that worry and fear that you feel shall be no more. For I shall cause the wind of my spirit to blow upon the chaff and I shall make clear that that is unclear, declares the spirit of grace. And I shall walk in the paths that you think are impossible because I am the God of impossibility. And you shall look upon me and you shall say, surely God has declared and has ordained and therefore we shall walk but hearken unto my voice and walk in that which I have ordained you to walk in do not fall on the left nor on the right do not be distracted says grace grace says focus on that which I have spoken that which I have spoken in the beginning glory to Jesus that which I spoke of you in the beginning that is the truth that is the path. That is the place where you need to walk. That which I spoke in the beginning. Look not on the left nor on the right. But stay in that place that I may manifest that which has already been spoken of you. For I the Lord have established my house. And my house shall stand firm and shall walk and shall declare and shall be that which I have spoken. For I the Lord, when I speak my word, it never comes back nigh and void until it accomplishes that which I have purposed to do. For I have spoken and I've spoken many times. But hearken and walk and do that which I have already spoken unto you, declares the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Whoa, come on, house. Now just begin to glorify God in this place. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> oh, hallelujah! 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 Oh, hallelujah! Now, Father, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you. Because that that was impossible is possible. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that that, that is impossible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am the God of impossibility. <laughs> I am the God of impossibility. Nothing is impossible to him. Nothing is impossible. But walk there for Glory to Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can see, I see in the spirit, they're coming back. A coming back of the nations, a coming back of the nations, a coming back into truths that were hidden, a coming back into truths that were hidden, foods uh, that were put on the byways, things that were never spoken about and were been truths of old, truths of old. They shall begin to be spoken, and we shall begin to see the manifestation of the true power of God, of the true power of God. Father, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh my God, I best stop. Yes, sir, I best stop. No, no. We better stop, Lord. <laughs> no, no, no. Hands up. Please, please. Please. Glory to God. In the same uh, breath and in the same way that we are in, I want us to slightly go deeper. I want you to search God and to feel God and touch God for yourself and to feel God and touch. You know, sometimes when we are in church, you know, preaching like this, we come with all our burdens, with our pains and aches, with our heartbreak, and we wait for a time when the pastor you know, makes an altar call or when the pastor calls people to the front. Or you wait for the pastor to pray for you, your healing. But today I want to tell you that you have the same power in you, the same as the one that the pastor has. Because we all serve the mighty living God. There is no difference between you and Pastor Derek. God is no respecter of persons. 
God is in you just like he's in me. He's in you just like he's in Pastor L. I want you to trust and to believe that. And just as Pastor L uh, preached, and as the Bible says that if you have faith, just as small as a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to move and be cast to the sea. I want to summon all of us and I want to stir all of us to pick up that small mustard seed faith, wherever you've put it, wherever it is. I want you to have an imagination of picking it. I want you to feel it. Just that small faith. I want all of us to have that small faith. And the God in us, the God in us that does miracles, I want you to pray to him. And if you have any need, if you're sick and feeling pain in your body, I want you to cast it out using that faith. It's in you and it's within you. You have the power and right now God is moving. God is touching us. It's not about me, it's not about the pastor, but it's about you and God. Look up to God, God is the one that does the healing. It's not me who does the healing, it's not a pastor who does the healing. How badly do you need it? Can you connect yourself with God, with that small and little faith that you have? And God is going to give you deliverance right now. Uh, do you have a broken heart? What do you have? Are you looking for a job? God is moving and God is answering prayers right now. He's touching us here. Please don't be a spectator, don't just watch around. I used to do that. That I would come to church and just watch other people, you know, as they pray and all. And I was dry because I used to miss the moving of God. Please don't do that. Take it upon yourself and call upon God. Reach up to God right now. Touch him right now. Can you pray and cry unto him? Tell him your needs. Tell him your cries. Whether it's just about thanking him, just praising him, just worshiping him. That's why God has created us. We are on earth to praise and worship God. If you have nothing to say, just just smile, just smile in awe of him, Lord. Just smile, just praise him, just say hallelujah, just that, that is enough. Just in any way that God moves you, in any way that the spirit moves you, whether you want to pray in tongues or whatever, just wrestle with God. It is between you and God. It's not about me or about anybody else. If you want that deliverance, wrestle with God now. God is here. And God is moving. God promised to be with us where two or three are gathered in his name. I want you to feel God just next to you. He's listening to you and he wants to hear what you have to say to him. Whether it's praising him, whether it's worshiping him, he's just right here next to you. He's inside you. I, wa I want you to feel him. How does he feel inside you? Can you feel him? Tell him whatever you want to tell him. He's open and ready to hear your prayers. God, want to thank you, want to honor you, want to magnify you, Lord. Please do not go back the way you came. God is here to take away your burdens. It would be disrespectful of you to go back with your burdens when he said, leave your burdens here before his cross. I hope none of us are going to go back with our burdens. Can we leave them here? Let God deal with it. When we walk out of that door, may we walk out delivered and free people. Thank you. We may be seated. Thank you. We are now transitioning to um, um, offerings. Uh, it's offering time now. And um, I think we have uh, somebody at the back who is going to receive our offerings. Um, we're just going to pray as you prepare yourself. Uh, for those online, we will be giving you um, the bank details and they give it, give it word that give it up we have an app that you can use uh, in order to honor God with your tithes and offerings and at this same time I want us to um, to take time to pray uh, for those who are either lost their jobs and looking for jobs
to, to, to bless your business. For God blesses the works of our hands and the sweat of our bro. So whether you're in business or, you, or you're in work, are we going to pray and release God's blessing upon you? That um, as you continue to labor, God multiplies whatever your hands touch. Dear God, want to thank you for this moment, want to thank you for this time. The heavens and earth belong to you and the riches thereof. Father, we pray that may you open the heavens and bless your people. I pray for those who have lost their jobs. I pray for those who are looking for jobs. I pray for those who have opened new businesses and those who are in businesses. Lord, I pray that may you open the windows of heaven and, and pour out a blessing upon them. Lord, I pray that may you guide those who are looking for jobs to the right jobs that you want them to do. Uh, jobs where they are going to honor you and continue doing your work. Uh, jobs where they are going to bless you and to witness, um, witness you as their Lord and Savior. Uh, places where they are going to change and turn around and get people to know you as their, as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray for those who are into business. I pray that God may you give them wisdom, may you give them knowledge in all the inter entrepreneurship skills that they require in order to be able to conquer the marketplace and in order to be able to compete with those that are uh, in the marketplace. And Lord, I pray that may you cut out a niche for them and may they be blessed and may, they, may, may, they, may their businesses be a blessing. Lord, I pray that may you multiply whatever they touch and whatever they do. And Lord, as we give, we give what we have, but we pray that, Lord, may you multiply it for the work of your kingdom. I want to thank you for protecting us. I want to thank you for good health. I want to thank you for being with us, and we want to thank you for keeping us. Lord, we pray that you continue to protect and to keep us as we uh, serve and worship you on earth, and even as we uh, get uh, whatever you've provided to us and as we give back to you. We want to thank you, want to honor you, and magnify you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> our focus we won't change our minds passion in our hearts fire in our eyes sorrow all around us pain that overwhelms we refuse to partner with the gates of hell